Throughout history, we used to think of intelligence as something mysterious that can only exist in biological organisms, especially humans. In recent decades, however, the progress in the field of artificial intelligence has led many researchers in the field to acknowledge that we are heading towards a future where humans are no longer the most intelligent entity on Earth. Max Tegmark is a Swedish-American physicist, cosmologist, and machine learning researcher at MIT. He thinks that AI will redefine what it means to be human due to the scale of the changes it will bring about. During the past 13.8 billion years, our universe has transformed from dead and boring to complex and interesting. And it has the opportunity to get dramatically more interesting in the future if we don't screw up. About four billion years ago, life first appeared here on Earth, but it was pretty dumb stuff like bacteria that couldn't really learn anything in their lifetime. I call that life 1.0. We are what I call life 2.0 because we can learn things. If I want to learn Spanish, I can study Spanish and now I have all these new skills uploaded in my mind. And it's precisely this ability of us humans to design our own software rather than be stuck with what ev the software evolution gave us, which has enabled us to dominate this earth and give us what we call cultural evolution. We seem to be gradually heading towards life 3.0, which is life that can design not just its software but also its hardware. Maybe we're at 2.1 right now because we can get cochlear implants and artificial knees and a few minor things like this. But if you were a robot that was able to think as cleverly as right now, of course, there would be no limits whatsoever to how you could upgrade yourselves. Tegmark defines intelligence as the ability to achieve complex goals in the world. He includes both biological intelligence as well as artificial intelligence in this definition. There are a number of scenarios that the superintelligence will be achieved. Some researchers believe that humans will evolve or directly modify their biology so as to achieve radically greater intelligence. There are many scientific, technological, and social uncertainties relevant to the creation of an intelligent machine, and whether one should expect a sudden event or a gradual development of increasingly intelligent machines. There are many ways in which AI could surpass human intelligence. We are already studying the algorithms of the brain in order to figure out how our own minds work and use that information to make machines more intelligent. Artificial intelligence today is properly known as narrow AI or weak AI. It is designed to perform a narrow task such as a chatbot, virtual assistant, or self-driving car. It can perform particular functions at the expert level. However, current AI lacks common sense and can only deal with a narrow range of situations compared with humans. While AI will not be a human-level general intelligence in the near future, it will bring about massive changes in society. We are living in an era of accelerating change, and the pace of this change is exponential. In contrast to narrow AI, an advanced artificial general intelligence, or AGI, is one that could perform any task in the abstract world. It would be capable of learning arbitrary things unrelated to its original task and creating new forms of knowledge through self-directed discovery and exploration. Some researchers believe that superintelligence will likely follow shortly after the development of artificial general intelligence. The first generally intelligent machines are likely to immediately hold an enormous advantage in at least some forms of mental capability, including the capacity of perfect recall, a vastly superior knowledge base, and the ability to multitask in ways not possible to biological entities. This may give them the opportunity to become much more powerful than humans. So first of all, why should we take seriously at all this idea of recursive self-improvement and superintelligence? A lot of people expect we can get the human level AI in a few decades, but why would that mean that maybe we can get AI much smarter than us, not just a little? The basic argument for this is very eloquently summarized in just this paragraph by I.J. Good from 1965. If we have a computer, that, a machine that can do everything as well as, as we can, well, one of the things we can do is design AI systems. So then it can too. And the, the speed of, of AI development will no longer be set by the typical R&D timescale of humans, so years, but by how fast machines can help you do this, which could be way, way faster. And uh, if it turns out that we have a hardware overhang where, where we've compensated for the fact that we really are kind of clueless about how to do the software of human-level AI by having massive amounts of extra hardware, 
then it might be that you can get a lot of through improvements first, even just by changing the software, which is something that can be done very, very quickly, right, without even having to build new stuff. And then from there on, you might be able to get machines that are dramatically smarter than us. Most surveyed AI researchers expect machines to eventually be able to rival humans in intelligence, though there is little consensus on when this will likely happen. According to Sam Harris, even if a machine is no smarter than a team of researchers at MIT, electronic circuits function about a million times faster than biochemical ones. So, you set it running for a week, and it will perform 20,000 years of human-level intellectual work, week after week. Given the speed that these machines can process information, to be six months ahead of the competition here is to be 500,000 years ahead, at a minimum. The development of intelligent machines that are capable of self-improvement raises many existential questions relevant to the issue of human existence. That is why it is of utmost importance that we learn to control AI to do what we want it to do. It's not enough to just make our technology powerful. We also have to focus on figuring out how to control it and on figuring out where we want to go with it. The more intelligent and powerful machines get, the more important it becomes that their goals are aligned with ours. There's no reason to think that intelligent machines would have human goals if, if we built them, and after all. The idea is just that whatever fundamental goal you give a very intelligent machine, if it's pretty open-ended, it's pretty natural to expect that it might develop sub-goals of, of not wanting to be switched off and try to get resources. And they sh why should they have sort of weird alpha male goals of trying to get power? Or but there's a very interesting argument. If you, program, if you have a robot and you program it to walk to the supermarket and buy you food and cook you a nice dinner, it's going to develop the sub-goal of self-preservation because if it gets mugged and murdered on the way back with your food, it's going to not give you your dinner. Self-preservation is an emergent goal of almost any goal that the machine might have. Goals are hard to accomplish when you're broken. We want to make sure that if we ever give a lot of power to machines, of intelligence comparable or greater to ours, that their goals are aligned with ours. Otherwise, we can be in trouble. Machines will not just share our goals by default. They might develop their own sub-goals that may not be in our best interest. We need to ensure that AI adopts our goals rather than the other way around, and we need to do this right the first time. So this is maximally motivating to think about how we can steer this technology in a good direction. How can we learn to control AI to do what we want it to do? It could be awesome or it could be not so great and it depends on what we do now. And I'm quite optimistic that we can create a really inspiring future with technology as long as we win this race between the growing power of the technology and the growing wisdom with which we manage it. But when you get beyond a certain point in the power of the technology, this idea of learning from mistakes is just really, really lousy, right? You don't want to make mistakes if one mistake is unacceptably many. And when we, get, when we talk about nuclear weapons, synthetic biology, and certainly superhuman AI, I feel we're at that point where we really don't want to mistakes, make mistakes. We want to shift strategy from being reactive to being proactive. The danger of not designing control right the first time is that a superintelligence may be able to seize power over its environment and prevent humans from shutting it down. There are a number of problems that could potentially arise if AI attains superintelligence. Can we trust it? What are the consequences of working with machines that one day may outsmart us in every way imaginable? We cannot deny AI's potential to replace us as the dominant entity on the planet. While there are many unknowns about the development of intelligent machines and how we should deal with them, there is no question that AI will play a fundamental role in the future of humanity. Superintelligence does not necessarily have to be something negative. According to Tegmark, if we manage to get it right, it might become the best thing to happen to mankind. Thanks for watching. Did you like this video? Then show your support by subscribing and ringing the bell to never miss videos like this.